Today I'm going to do a little clip that is purely about color. What I'm going to talk about is the absolute basics, the building blocks of the system. Now if you find that you get bored with what I'm saying in the first 30 seconds, 2 minutes or 3 minutes, turn it off and then go and watch something about an underwater knife fighting course, whatever. It doesn't really bother me. What I want to talk to you is for people that are interested about what Kalar is really about. There are some superb clips put on by fantastic people, i.e. Idana Bolanek, Luke Myers, and of course my great friend Matt, Matt Deville, British top guy, all putting on real class clips on how the system works. What I want to do is to show you basically the basics and then grow from them. Also, don't think you're going to understand the system of Kalar through just watching a DVD or a little clip or whatever. If you want to learn, you really need to learn from someone that knows the system. You've got to have the hands on. And in England, we're lucky. We've got some brilliant practitioners. And if you go on to Kalar UK, you Google Kalar UK, you'll find out the real people that have done the training, that have been with um, Idan, and put their heart and soul into learning the system. So if you really want to learn about it, go on there and find out who the people are that can teach you. And around the world, Italy, Spain, there's also South Africa, you know, there are some great schools. But I want to show you what the basics are. This is what I want to train you in. And the first thing I'm going to show you is about our stance. Now in other little videos I've called it a fence or whatever, but it's a stance. It's what happens if someone comes up to you and threatens you. And the whole idea is that you give them this passive submissive, acting as a victim role. And what we do in Kalar is we bring our elbows in, we put our hands up, we bring our neck down, bring our shoulders up to protect these vital veins here, our arteries, yeah? So we bring our, and we don't look the guy in the face. We're not going to be conf confrontational. No way. We're going to look down. Why? We're really not being submissive and passive. We're using this as a planning stage. Because if I look down, first of all, I'm looking at this area here. It is the optimizes my peripheral vision to see if this aggressive person is going to move down into his pocket. Yeah? Why is he going down there? Yeah? He's going to bring something out. I can look down and see his hand movements, what he's going to do. The other thing is, I'm not staring him in the eyes. You know, if someone comes up to you and it's confrontational, and, you know, they are aggressive. They are going to have all the look. They're going to be the top dog. You know, see, when you see a dog, you know, rear up for a fight, you know, his hackles come in, he makes him look bigger. Yeah, this guy is going to change the look of his face. He's going to get old here. Yeah? If you look back and go, uh, like that, bang, that's confrontational. But if you go, oh, and be submissive, bring your elbows in, your hands up, yeah? Bring your legs together, anything like this, yeah? It looks as though you're acting the role of a victim. Straight away, it gives you an extra percentage for survival. I'm not saying it's going to be a massive percent, maybe 2%, 3%. All these percentages add up in the whole scheme of things. So, this is what we're looking at. First of all, we have a neutral stance. I don't even get in to a boxing stance. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be like this. If someone gets hold of me, I want to be, I bring my legs together. Yeah, I'm protecting my groin. I'm bringing my elbows in. 
I'm protecting all my vital organs. My shoulders come up, my head drops, my hands come up forwards, yeah? And I'm like this, and I'm talking. I am listening to what this guy is saying to me. And then I am going to take the time to plan what I'm going to do. And this is the secret and the building blocks to collapse. Because what we're doing is planning. Because in a situation, you are going to get a massive adrenaline dump. Now, some people say you can get the word uh, battlefield inoculation. If you're a, a soldier, if you're a policeman, if you're a doorman, if you're a firefighter, you're used to have in this adrenaline dump, yeah, because you're in a situation where you're going to put yourself in danger, and as soon as your body's in danger, you will be given this adrenaline dump. It's a survival instinct. But the problem is, if you're a soldier, policeman, firefighter, bounce or whatever, you're already psyched up with this situation. Yeah? You've put on a uniform. A bouncer puts on his uniform. A firefighter puts on his protective equipment. A policeman puts on his equipment. Same as a soldier. So when he's confronted with a situation, he's already on a different level. So the adrenaline dump that he gets, he is already psyched up for. As a civilian, walking about, having a drink in a pub, walking in the park with your wife or whatever, and some other human being comes up to you and for no apparent reason just grabs hold of you, yeah, decides you are the victim. He, because of whatever reason that is going on in here that you can't understand, he has decided he is going to ruin you. So it doesn't matter about this battlefield inoculation, yeah? You're a civilian and you don't expect it. And this is where this really helps. Because you can use this as part of your freeze area. What happens is, when a situation develops, no matter how much training you do, and again, battlefield inoculation, when it happens and you get to adrenaline dump, you could freeze. Or you could go into this situation. Oh my lord. Well, if you've trained for this and used it as part of your training aid, it's going to work for you. So you imagine someone coming up to you and threatening you. It could be a punch, it could be a knife, it could be a gun. Yeah? And as they grab hold of you, you go straight into this. Your body's used to it because you've trained it. So straight away, your elbows go in, your shoulders go up, your hands come down, your legs come in, and you're there and say, please, please, I don't want trouble. Please, I don't want trouble. But what you're doing is planning. And your brain's been used to being like this. And when this happens, and you go in for the first one and a half, two seconds, my God, what's happening? Oh, God, I know it's I've been attacked. Yeah? and you're like this, suddenly it starts to work for you. And in Kalar, this is the first basic building block. We use this when we're being threatened. We're not pushing the guy away and coming up in this sort of stance. Yeah, We're not kicking, we don't want distance. The guy grabs hold of us, someone threatens us, we are like this. And our eyes are on his chest, we're actually taking our time to get ourselves aware of the situation and what we're going to do. So when you see Dan do this, when you see Matt do this, and when you see Luke do this, in all their videos you will see them. You think, why are they doing it? Because it is the integral first part of the building block of the system understand. You watch them. They don't pull away. 
they come in because they know that closeness in a in a, a situation, close quarter fighting, is exactly what it says. You're safer in close than you are away. So their hands come up. Watch what I do. My elbows come in, and everybody's different. My build is different from your build. So I have to, I struggle getting my elbows in. So I might just turn slightly. Yeah, I can talk my face. Oh please, you know, you start moving your face and can talk it. Someone hits it and you've got your face. It's better than being just normal. Yeah. Look how my shoulders come up to protect myself. Look how my hands come in and I'm like this and I'm looking downwards and I'm not pulling away and I'm listening to what the guy's saying to me. This is what I do until I can plan to do what I want to do and I explode into it with whatever move I'm going to do. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. This, when you see Kalar, is the most, one of the, there's loads of important parts of Kalar, but this is the base, the building block. But what I don't want you to get confused is, this is what you do in a threat. Someone threatens you. Someone comes up and grabs you. Yeah? Someone comes up with a knife and threatens you. Someone comes up with a gun. Yeah? You then do this. We don't do this if someone comes up and stabs you. Let's be reality based. That's what happens in the real world. Someone puts one into you. You don't then go, oh, please, please, please. You are going to react fast. Someone tries to put you in a free quarter, you know, neck hold. Yeah, this is a dangerous position to be in. Yeah, you don't start saying, oh, no, 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 no. You react to that situation. But this is the more advanced part of Kalar and the more advanced part of the training, which I, I want to cover. But I want to just start with the most basic thing. Practice this move and start to get your body used to if someone grabs hold of you, no matter what, from the side, from the back, from the front, from the head, you do this. Get your hands up, yeah? Look as though you're being passive submissive. Look at this, practice this. Because in reality, this is what you'll do. And if your body's used to doing it, it will realise, wow, from here, I know how to react. Yeah? So it's an important part of the whole um, situation of Kalar. Yeah? But it's an integral part. So practice it and try it and learn it. Yeah? Because this is what it's all about. But I hope I explained it so you understand. And uh, I hope it helps you. And like I say, um, there is so much to the system, but it all starts with the basic building blocks. So I hope this helps you, and most importantly, keep safe out there. God bless.